Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Maharaj.
the all mode, the, the disappearance, the of Shilabhati Minotaku, and also that of Gadata Pandit. Good. So, uh, I thought I could speak mainly about Bhakti Minotaku in the short time which we have. Focus on one aspect of his work that is uh, this amazing song collection of the Shalanagati prayers, and I believe it will become uh, very useful for you to hear it, as it was extremely useful for myself to, to prepare this. The thoughts which are your perspective, which I wish to share with you. So, mm, keeping to the form of our lectures, I've chosen um, verse first. Um, and then <coughs> we, will, we will discuss this a little bit. Um, just see if I have this. Yeah. 
Yes. of the Roman rule of Palestinian 
So Pontius Pilatus happened to be a very intelligent man. So this final meeting with Jesus, the death the sentence was already pronounced. He asked him in great exasperation, I, I, I know I don't want to do it, I have to do it, however, in order for the greater good to rule this country. And I'm asking you now a question. When will you be more influential and people will be more disturbed by you? Um, when you are alive or when you are dead. Think about what can a dead man do? Very much, much more than a living man in some cases. Because if a, a person has left a legacy of wisdom, uh, then that will outlive him by many, many long years and be more influential even than he was at the time of his uh, uh, life when he spoke his, uh, his wisdom. So we all know that Christ, Pilatus' question was justified and in fact uh, due to Jesus' uh, uh, personality um, and his, his preaching and his recorded words. Uh, a very influential, maybe one of the most influential religions on this earth was founded, Christianity, which is based on, on his, uh, his uh, sayings to a large degree because the, his teachings in the New Testament have overruled the teachings of the previous version of Christianity, which is depicted in the Old Testament. It's much more influential, much more vibrant. So the same way, Bhaktivinoda's glorious life finds really this combination in this legacy which continues to influence uh, generations of, of devotees in a very uh, nice way. Before we hear the verse, because the verse will bring us directly into his legacy, please, uh, before we hear the translation I wanted to say, please allow me to just give you a brief sum up of his life in a sincere attempt to glorify today. He, uh, when he appeared, uh, it was in a little village, and as a little child, he took great interest in spirituality. He remembers in his autobiography, when he was around eight years or so, uh, he was afraid he stayed in a a larger house. He was afraid of ghosts. Um, that's typical for children. I also had great problems with ghosts uh, when I was a child. I think I imagined them to be there, but uh, whatever, I was scared in the night. Uh, so, but did you know Taku then went to a guard who guarded the apple uh, plantation? Uh, some, some fruit tree, I don't know. Maybe it was mango. I think it was mango or not ever. Uh, and he asked the guard what to do when one is afraid. And the guard said, he was a night guard, he said, I chant the name of Ram. And chanting the name of Ram makes one fearless. Uh, so, Dr. Minotaku learned at an early age to take fully shelter at the Holy Name. And uh, we all know his uh, writings and his workings is very much about <coughs> his Holy Name. Maybe a seed, uh, I don't want to say it was laid there uh, because he, we understood him to be an eternally liberated soul. But uh, there, this, uh, the, 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 the very young age, he took 
acid and shit in the, in the holy name. But if you, I mean, some, uh, did you have ghost problems as a child? No, yes, middle, sometimes, no? Or, or we are afraid of something. We are scared to go the, in the night through the forest. I, I a child, I would, I would challenge myself. I would get up at 12 o'clock and then go through the, through the little empty streets to just harden myself against fear. Uh, so, in any case, this is normal for children to feel the fears in, in, in some ways. Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, later he became the revolutionary preacher of the Holy Name, who uh, spread a network of chanting uh, throughout Bengal, which he called the Navamata system, which was largely based on uh, people coming together and chanting the holy name with Madanga and Karatals. And he, uh, a large part of his writing is dedicated to uh, presenting the glories of the holy name. Did you know that he made a research? It's, it's the, 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 a research about the Namacharya Arvastakur. He, he tried to find literature which was written by those who had come in contact with Nam Haridas Thakur, who had seen the great Acharya of the Holy Name chanting the whole day and night uh, the Holy Name. And it is said that Haridas Thakur, in between, when people came to look for his advice, told them the glories of his Holy Name of the Holy Name. Based on this tremendous body of research, Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote later the book, can you imagine? Harinam Chitamani. Yes, where he uh, 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 records a conversation between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Haridas Thakur. How did he know the Thakur's answer in version to particular question? Well, he had done this research where he had extracted uh, the, the, the last existing traces, so to say, of what the, the Namacharya had left. He wrote a sequel to Harinam uh, Chittamani. Uh, do you know the name of it? Vajanarasya in which he went even uh, 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 many levels deeper into the, which explained the holy name, by writing a guidebook how the devotee can be absorbed throughout the 24 hours of the day in the holy name uh, by, by following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, instructions and combining ultimately that's the treasure of our uh, Sampradaya. The chanting with the, um, with the memory of uh, mem memorizing or remembering, or thinking of the exalted pastimes of Radha and Krishna in the spiritual world. Um, yes, a great, great uh, presenter of the glories of the Holy Name. That's one way to um, glorify Bhakti uh, 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 He writes about this aspect of his, of the cosmos of, of his contribution. There are many contributions that he had made a, a novel endeavor to spread the chanting of the Holy Name as the Yuga Dharma throughout uh, the country. And he was very successful. He, he writes, yogis, intellectuals, and mayavadis, they're chanting. Was due to the Namata effect, it was such a powerful presence. But then, alas, 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 he laments, the Kali took over, and where once everyone chanted, he felt, Again, this yogic uh, uh, 
went to have Mayavadi and, uh, interpretations of the Vedas took over and a great, great, great inner Zerknirschung is a German word, I think it says what it means, you know. He was really zerknirscht. You can, you, you are intelligent people, you can hear the sound, you don't know what it means. Uh, uh, it's really, you know, it's great sadness is an easy way to explain it. Uh, contrition, contrition is the English word. Uh, uh, then, um, he went to Puri to take shelter, and he said, as he was chanting, in great remorsefulness, my mission has failed, that Goranda Mahaprabhu actually appeared to him personally on the beach of Puri and instructed him, oh Bhakti, you know, do not be sad. Everything will come in order. Now you go. And you focus entirely on chanting. And then Bhakti Nautako locked the door of the little kutia behind himself and he took entire shelter in the holy name. He was really, um, there is a plaque on the Bhakti Nautako kutia. Here, the, the, the soul, a uh, soul, has taken shelter to exclusively dedicate himself to the chanting of the holy name. It is this one aspect of Bhakti Nautaku which I would like to highlight um, and it is also this tip which I would like to give to uh, some of you. I remember uh, uh, listening to a conversation which Prabhupada had with very, very disenchanted disciples who felt very frustrated. I don't know why, but uh, they came to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada offered them a solution which I would like to offer you also in uh, following this great Acharya Bhakti Nautaku. When you find yourself in a situation where you cannot solve the complexities of your existence, when you are overwhelmed with the sorrow or when you are unclear where to go in your life. Um, should you go or should you stay? Um, at, at that time, it is, uh, this is the advice for you. Go before the deities. Go before the Lord and sit down and chant and don't get up before you have the solution. <laughs> this is uh, taking shelter. Uh, and uh, Bhakti Nautaku's life story is one of taking shelter. He had a very difficult task. He needed to single-handedly, just imagine this, to bring the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again to the surface. Because like it is natural for Kali Yoga, it had been totally covered. Yes, the movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had fallen in disrepute. Yes, uh, there was a bad feeling about the movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu helps people to escape their responsibility, blah, 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 blah. The same story as today. Um, <laughs> so, so he brought the movement and its pristine teachings uh, to, his, to the forefront by his amazing scholarship, but more than that, his absolute devotion and surrender to Gurana. He says, it was not always like this, uh, we believe his own words, he, he says he was fully steeped in the studies of intellectual scriptures, but then 
He met a Vaishnava who alerted him to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching, and he he searched and finally found a copy of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yes, it, there was, it, it was no longer on the market. It was it was fallen in disrepute. You couldn't get the forbidden Chaitanya Charitamrita in Bengal. Maya. And he got a copy, he became convinced and he became the only <coughs> single preacher at that time to spread Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement in a glorious way. In a most glorious way. He was well educated at that time and he became, uh, was so respected by the English men that he became a high court uh, j judge on the external uh, uh, feature. One in English gentleman, Mr. Hastings, really highly placed man, said this, he is an, Kedanan Dutta has an impeccable character, impeccable character. And uh, he was highly, highly placed in the man. And in his writing, he always took care to make a bridge between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings and the highly educated people. Now, of all his qualities, this absolute surrender to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission uh, it comes out, out uh, 100%. During his time, there was one very unfortunate incident. There was a really powerful yogi uh, who claimed to be an incarnation of Mahavishnu who had come to throw the British out of in India. In India, the, you would say, what? Mahavishnu throws out the British people? That doesn't sound like Mahavishnu. In Bengal, <laughs> no problem, you know, the Indians think differently. Uh, many more things are possible in the Indian mind than in the Western mind. Uh, so, and that is good often, but it's a different type of thinking. So, he uh, was at that time a judge in uh, Puri, and he got reports about this incarnation of Man Vishnu, who met with the ladies of high class people in the night in the jungle to engage in uh, his own Rasa Lila uh, performance with them. Highly immoral in other words. And uh, Bhakti took it upon himself to confront uh, this uh, uh, yogi. And the yogi uh, was really powerful. He was incarcerated in, in prison. But from the prison, imagine, he worked his occult powers on Bhakti who became half paralyzed, and on his family, who became deadly sick. And the yogi said, I will save you from my wrath. I Mahavishnu will pardon you if you let me out of this prison. Otherwise, your family will die and you will die. Oh, oh, oh. Mahavishnu will not answer us. Justice must prevail. Uh, by an ordinary, by our court, because you are an ordinary man. And he, with full surrender, went through this excruciating pain and ordeal, and ultimately was, uh, he, he was convicted. And there were, there were many, 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 many followers of him protesting, pro protesting against his imprisonment and using all types of pressure, but Bhakti no Thakur remained totally dependent on Krishna and ultimately the, 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 the
scheme, we must say, died and uh, everything was over. Fully surrendered. So uh, he wrote one song collection which is held, I'm going now into his influence after this time, in the highest esteem. Because my dear devotees, it focuses on the one nuclear or core teaching of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It is also the core te teachings of, of other forms of Vaishnavism, like the Sri Sampadaya also has this. It is surrender to Krishna's will. If you want to be a proper devotee, you don't need to know many things. You need to only know how to surrender, really. And it will become very clear by this, this soul. Yeah. Your will, Krishna, may have but my will is not so important. I will follow your, your will. The type of surrender is, you, you need to know, it's, it's, it's really if you want to cross an ocean, do you need to know how high the waves are? Do you, I mean, if you are in the ocean, if you are in the ocean, do you need to understand all the currents, the, the, the temperatures of the currents, how they appear from where the Gulf, the Gulf, whatever it's called, Gulf current, current comes? No, you just need to know one thing, how to swim. What you do with the hands, what you do with the legs. Go Krishna does not yet know how to swim, but he will learn. I am determined. But, uh, um, it's a skill you need in life. Uh, in spiritual life, you are absolutely dependent on it. So you need to know when it's time to surrender and how to do it. How to Mm -hmm. Why? In this shloka which we have heard today, it says there are two types of persons. Those who are Sharanagati, Sharanagati, who have surrendered, and those who are Akinshana, who are absolutely free from selfish desires. So they have very similar symptoms, the surrendered soul and the fully renounced of a, 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 a free soul from everything else. But the one who practices Sharanagati has an amazing Lakshana which makes him extremely fortunate. Would, mm, so, I read to you Prabhupada's translation and I will then read to you another translation. There are two kinds of devotees. Those who are fully satisfied and free from all material desires of the attention. So, and those who are fully surrendered to the lotus feet of the law. Their qualities are one and the same. Right? Those who are free from the selfish desires and the fully surrender. Their qualities are absolutely the same. But those who are fully surrendered to Krishna's lotus feet are qualified with another transcendental quality, something which really immediately lifts them out of all the various spiritually advanced people. They are Atma Samapan, fully surrendered without reservation. Now, someone who is not, who is surrendered to Krishna, he, he something happens to, to him which is really amazing. That's said in text 102. Sharana Lama Kode Krishna Atma Samapana Krishna Tare Kare Kale Atma Sama. When a devotee thus fully surrenders unto Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna accepts him as one of 
with confidential associates. Let me summarize. When you become very, um, how do you say, uh, renounced, when you become uh, free from material desires, you are amazingly qualified in your spirit. <coughs> but not as qualified as when you uh, finally surrender your independent will and you uh, surrender to Krishna's lotus feet. Then Krishna accepts you as his confidential associate. Another translation. Although a devotee who surrendered to Krishna, Sharanagata, and a devotee who is detached from this world, Akinsha, have the same external characteristics, the surrendered devotee has the superlative qualification of having fully offered their very soul to Krishna. And as soon as the surrendered soul takes shelter of Krishna and fully offers themselves to Krishna, Krishna immediately accepts them as his own, as an associate equal to himself. Have you followed, or is it too much philosophy in the, on an empty stomach? <laughs> you can understand? Yeah. Now, we, I know some of us are just barely and happy. They just made it a little sleepy and a little, oh, life is so tough on them. I can see it in your faces. So I will now be super simple and super, and no longer high-sounding person. Let's get to the essence, man. <laughs> Bhakti Vinotaku's surrender reflected in this schedule what he daily did. He rose at 12 o'clock. What did he do with those in, uh, at 12 o'clock? He wrote this box. He uh, left the world once counted it, but no one knows. I remember 120 books original writings, translations of Vedic scriptures, uh, everything, poems. He was very, very creative. Then he chanted uh, in the early morning hours, uh, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, Brahma Mukhota. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he must have felt a little, getting up so early, a little uh, let me say, yeah, he was up for a long time. So his neighbor uh, has this uh, writing, from his neighbor who lived next door said, but you know, Taco had in his garden that there were fresh breezes coming from the uh, Ganga. He had a chair built out of cement, so if you sat on it, it was cooling. Uh, it, uh, cement absorbs the night chill, and he was chanting. But how he was chanting? The neighbor said it sounded as if someone was calling someone else. Krishna, Krishna, like he called, called. For instance, I, I often call my assistant. Go Krishna, go Krishna, and then he will have to come. And then he comes. So in that way. But you know, Thakur was really calling out to Krishna. Then he did bhajans. He had a little room, you can see it like this. Uh, only this from here, look at my head, this wide and this long. And he closed it and he was sitting there chanting and, 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 and focusing on Krishna. And what does it mean? Singing to Krishna, meditating about Krishna, uh, confidential worship, that is Bhajan. Uh, uh, I don't know what this uh, eternally liberated soul did. Then at 9 o'clock, he ate two chapatis and a little milk breakfast. Bus. Then, uh, if there was Visitors, he preached to the visitors, he had to also manage the Namhata. And then he would go around noontime to court, 
to the court where he took his judgment. It is said that he was very quick. He used to read the case, he used to ponder it, and then he made a judgment on the spot without research. And uh, it is said his judgments were extremely uh, um, precise. You know, judges are sometimes reviewed how are they doing. And to make a good judgment about a case is not a gut feeling. You have to know law in and out. You have to know different complications of law. You have to uh, know uh, judgments, good judgments which were done in the past because a judgment can really uh, very much influence the life of a human being. It's a very, very responsible work. As responsible maybe even more than surgical invasion. When you do a mistake in a surgical invasion, you ruin a human being, which is about great violence. If you do a mistake in your judgment, you can also ruin the life of someone else. So back to Minotakos, you know, Tacos was very fast, amazing fast. Uh, his colleague said, we take hours, he does it in five minutes, and it's good. You know, <laughs> you know. Then he took some, I don't know about his lunch, I've forgotten, but he returned at around seven o'clock in the evening, ate, spent some time with the family, and then was in bed by eight, because he, when did he rise? Midnight. Yeah. Nine o'clock, someone said. No. Twelve. Twelve. Yes. So, so that was his schedule. Oh, that, that is the schedule of a surrendered soul. So he uh, wrote this song collection. There are many song collections. But the chart, uh, there's Gita Bali, Gita Mala, uh, Kalyana Kalpataru, uh, and uh, of course the, the uh, big words, works, Pratana, and he translated, but these are original works. Four, oh, we have already, but his, his, his known really, uh, what the, something I don't want to say, but everyone says Sharanagati, you have to read this, you must read it, because it expresses the heartbeat, the pulse of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Not many things are necessary. If you know how to leave the covering of the false ego aside, which pushes you and which uh, uh, causes you to act in the modes and become an instrument, a surrendered instrument, then uh, 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 this is wonderful. Sharanagati must be done according to our scriptures with three, uh, yet with three. Tavasmiti Vadan Vacha, says the Chetan in the Chaitavita, Taiva Manasavitva. Tatstanam ashitastan va modate shalanagata. The body is there, um, or declaring with their words, I am yours. Tavasmiti. Knowing within their minds, I am yours. And then, taking shelter of your abode with their bodies, the surrendered soul rejoices. Shall I read it again for you? <laughs> Declaring with their words, I'm yours. Knowing this within their minds, and then taking shelter of your abode with their body, the surrendered soul rejoices. Rejoice means it's, it's joyful, he's happy. Um, Surrender 
requires not only the body. Okay, but we're doing it. So that's not it. Require you have to know it in your mind, and you have to do it. Now in this verse, which is uh, appears in Hari Bhakti Vilas and it's quoted in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, uh, the, the main point is words, mind, and body. That's how you surrender. <laughs> words, you say it. Mind, you think it and believe it. And body, you do it. <laughs> That's uh, uh, the surrendered soul which makes you happy. And I find it very interesting that the surrendered soul in this verse takes shelter with his body where the holy place in this world. I think it says something. We have a few very surrendered souls here in Radhadesh who really do tremendous service in the kitchen department, department in the temple president department, in the uh, building department. There's a lot going on behind the scenes here. Uh, and uh, you know, someone who wants to serve says, let me go to a place where, where I'm relatively safe from the walls of material nature. And I do. So in old times, everyone, uh, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they're mostly situated in India, not like globally, they would go to Vrindavan and surrender there and do this there as the fortunate thing. So on the, to practice surrender, Bhakti Notaku is not a theoretical speaker, but a practical speaker. He has written one song which his son, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, has singled out as the song which should be sung by devotees to clean their minds, to bring them uh, to the level that they can joyfully surrender. Just like in India, people will uh, every morning the housewife will uh, sweep the, 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 the apartment or house and before the house so that all the dust and the straw is removed. In the same way, a devotee should sing this song uh, to, uh, to clean with a broom his mind and make it ready for willingness to surrender. Would you like to hear the song? Yes. 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 Well, I mean, sure, I, said, I call it the atom bomb song <laughs> <laughs> because it's really heavy. No problem? No problem. Shankaracharya 
You have to ask the question, how often do I think of Krishna purposefully and often? Oh, Anyways, that's the broom. That's a heavy broom. It's an iron broom, in my opinion, which uh, is used to get, uh, get the soul clean from it, having fallen in the mud of material existence. But Bhakti Vinotaku by no means uh, uh, is, is, this is, uh, there, there are other very hopeful songs and I want to end with a, yeah, I found it finally, with a hopeful song so that you will uh, glorify him and not become afraid of Bhakti Vinotaku. Um, he wrote, In another song, how do we see this? It's very simple what he has given. 
he, he does not, another song, does not consider at all our disqualifications. If you have that one qualification, that is, you come to him and you beg him for the holy name. This is the happy news which Bhakti you know, Thakur brings down. A happy news which is uh, echoing through the uh, uh, times which have come after him. A happy news which is our saving grace even in this modern time, in 1990. Uh, the happy news is go uh, uh, to the great savior of the East, that's how we would call Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, our great savior, and uh, get from him the holy name, uh, and he will be safely rode across. Thank you very much. I hope I could uh, share with you my enthusiasm for Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur's revolutionary gift. Um, he was a worshipper of um, Gadai Gaur, Goranga, and Gadatha. Uh, uh, he had these deities in his home, which indicate uh, uh, a very confidential as aspect of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, philosophy, <coughs> something we cannot go into at this moment. Uh, and it is interesting that when uh, he disappeared on the day where his beloved Gadatha disappeared, uh, it, in, it uh, shows a deep connection and it shows a deep absorption, really deep, deep, deep absorption. Should we maybe add this one, one little Hare Krishna? Mm -hmm. Mahabhu, it, because we fast this morning. So we have a little extra time. Just right? short, very short. Something very sweet. Sweet. That's the same with love.
Oh. Uh -huh.
please allow me to just um, say something uh, which I feel is of value. Just uh, one minute. Uh, of course, I do think as a lecturer about what I say, and I know surrendering is not easy. I, I know this. Uh, um, I remember in my childhood, uh, one of our close friends had bought an old house and uh, we advised him, I, you know, I didn't know anything about my parents and others advised him, you, it's so old you will have problems with it. Uh, you better tear it down and build a new house there. And he said, oh, no, no, this is antique and so on. And he tried to build with that old house in mind and he tried to construct something. And in the end, after two years, there was a major leakage and he said, you should have listened now. Now the problem you need to put you need to tear everything down. And he, and he eventually did it and built the new house. There is a statement in Bhakti, in Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, where he says, before construction of the new takes place in spiritual life, the old has to be deconstructed. It, it means, in practical terms, yes, we this material existence which we have is based on the separated identity, you know, separated from Krishna. And it is an old house. It is not serving us very, very well. Our thoughts, our happiness, our distress, everything is centered on this which is not, not true, true. Now, to deconstruct the whole thing is practically impossible for a human being. It is, it is not possible to do that. How can he do this? But, uh, so, what we do in Krishna consciousness, we do small steps, doable steps of surrender. Um, and by this, a disposition enters where you like doing it. Uh, don't do too big of steps because you will hurt your mental, your subtle body too much and it, 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 you will develop a resistance uh, against this. It's very important. Not too big steps because we cannot do, we have not the adhikar to do it. But think of small steps which you do of surrender. Um, the, you know, maybe someone asked you, can you uh, please uh, do, do this service, you know, collect the cushions on which everyone said and put them in the corner of the temple room. And you may think, no, I had a plan to now eat prasadam, but you can, if it needs to be done, then you do it, it takes one minute, it's within your capability. And as you do these small steps which you presently can do, you will uh, begin to uh, get a good muscle. Many devotees do two big steps and then they need a pause for a long time. Um, because, yes, we need to practice according to our abilities. For instance, you can't go for a long time with not sufficient amount of sleep. It's not possible. You know, the mind will, will revolt <laughs> and then all kinds of dysfunctionalities come. But do small doable steps and you will see very soon the path opening for you in Krishna consciousness. And you will rejoice doing it. It is pleasurable. Uh, so, yes. Thank you very much. Now I will stop here. All right. All right.